Welcome to Wisdom Talk Radio, a collaborative community of explorers in conscious living. When we go beyond what we learned in school, which was as we, if we reflect back on it, was entirely based in industrial age mechanical thinking. And that kept us firmly planted in limits and in separation. And we see that reflected in our world all of the time. But what do we do to move forwards? What do we move towards? How? How, how do the most recent uh, scientific discoveries of the quantum field impact what is possible for us in how we think and in how we live? I know that's big stuff, but you know, you didn't, you didn't come and listen in for any small potatoes. And this is critical really, because this is how we can create the world that we want. So stay tuned. I'm Laurie Seymour, host of Wisdom Talk Radio and CEO and founder of the Baca Institute. Head to our website to take the Creative Innovator Quiz, where you can find out your personal creative innovator style, so you can open your creative flow and make everything in life easier. Flow does that. Learn to optimize your ability to create more and less time while enjoying every minute. I'm honored really to be with my guest today. Um, her first book, I think it's her first book and I'll tell you who she is in a minute, but her first, I think it's her first book and um, I know she's got a second and she, this one's been out for a while. I don't think that I have underlined as many places in a book in I don't know when things that she has articulated in ways that are so profound and so real and so helpful. Um, I recommend this book a lot. I recommend my next guest a lot. Um, she speaks my language and she does it in a way that is uniquely hers. So welcome my guest today, Diane Collins, who is the creator of the groundbreaking system of thinking, Quantum Think. An eight time, a world winning author of bestseller, Do You Quantum Think? New thinking that will rock your world. And it will, I guarantee it. <laughs> she is a highly acclaimed leader of new consciousness and strategic consultant to corporate executives. Diane's wide range of experiences from receiving the teachings of enlightened masters to partying with the rock stars, give her a big picture view and an authentic connection with people of all ages, cultures, and perspectives. She shows us how to take the literal quantum leap necessary for personal mastery. You can see why I'm so drawn to her and collective harmony in the fullest expression of our purpose and greatness. Welcome, Diane Collins, to Wisdom Talk Radio. Thank you, Lori Seymour. And I write back to you with being honored to be with you in this conversation and with all of your listeners and viewers. And uh, we're all here together on this planet Earth in this cosmos at a uniquely, we, we can't call it historic, but we can call it a unique time, probably, that any of us, even in our most aware consciousness and beyond, could even imagine. And it's, um, it's unknown. Uh, and we are the one, the paradox is, it's emerging, and we are the ones co-creating it. Yeah. So thank you. Mm. That, that, is, that is such a way to, to put it and such a place to begin because we, we are creating co-creating everything. And that's the nature of what 
you are of the picture you are painting and the reality that you are are um, are teaching people about. So we're going to talk a lot about quantum think, but just to kind of in a general sense, how does quantum think help us in these times where we are co-creating something that we haven't experienced or seen before? Well, quantum think, um, as you mentioned in, in my bio, is what I call a system of thinking. So we're in a universe of whole systems. And when you realize this, you know, perennial statement of wisdom, as you think, so you become, are predominant habits of thinking uh, in the form of thought, empowered by intent, energized by feeling tone and emotion and inner conviction. These habits of thinking literally, as we all know of people who are <laughs> in this conversation with us, mm -hmm. that the outer reflects the inner. So when, how it helps us, let me just answer that question mm -hmm. more directly. Okay. That how it helps us is we are in a time where we're being called upon to be the master beings on this earth, all of us. This is my view, and this is my what I have received. Uh, this is my <clears throat> insight, instinct, <laughs> unintellectual understanding is that, and my choice, getting mm -hmm. back to what you're talking about, about co-creating, co co is that we're here in a time of evolution, which we know is a leap in consciousness. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? And how do we achieve it? We've been talking about it. We've been talking about the great shift. We have, you know, way back when in the 80s, harmonic convergence, and then the end of the Mayan calendar, the, as the, you know, the end of uh, life as we have been accustomed to it. Mm -hmm. And so this shift in consciousness, how do we get there? Well, quantum think is a system of thinking of what I call distinctions, principles and practices for the mind and awareness that fuse uh, insights from cutting edge science, mm -hmm. merging again with the perennial wisdom mm -hmm. that is common to all mastery traditions and my role as i've been chosen to <laughs> my <laughs> infinite intelligence mm -hmm. is making it practical so mm -hmm. what how quantum thing can have can help us is it's a mastery practice that enables us to literally establish ourselves in a mastery state mm -hmm. so that we are a conscious choice in what we're creating for ourselves individually and for ourselves as a collective. So much in that, <laughs> so much in there. <laughs> and it's something you, I think you touch on in your book, but that I want to bring forward out of what you just said, which is the the essence of what we choose and that this is a time where we get to choose mastery we get to not settle for and, and this will bring in the other theme that is so prevalent in your book we don't settle for just going with the least action pathways and i'll ask you to explain that in a minute it, it's just it's we have a choice we each have a choice and somebody can say, well, no, 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 this is how I was raised and this is who I am, but we still have a choice. So I'd love for you to speak to the least action pathways there. Well, we do have a choice. And uh, when this is, <laughs> was my revelation, okay? So I think, well, with 6,000, as you think, so you become. God creates reality. Well, how does it do that? right? This was when I was younger and seeking and questioning and doubting and being a skeptic. 
if all you had to do was change your thought to change your life to change the world, well, then why does it still look like it right. does? Right. If we have choice, which we do, mm -hmm. uh, then what's going on here? There's a gap between where we want to be, where we aspire to be, and where and how it's playing out. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, there's good, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the sublime. So I'm not saying it's all terrible, but to get to this higher state that we know is possible. So what my, and I'll get to explain the beliefs to action pathway through this. So what I thought is that, yes, we're, we can be a choice when we have mastery with our own mind. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, well, what about heart, right? That mind, no, get out of your mind and come to your heart and come to your senses. Mm -hmm. But when I say mind, what I mean is the individualized form, the individualized mm -hmm. manifestation of the all-encompassing consciousness. So mind in this sense is very simply what we hold in awareness mm. and what we hold in awareness includes thoughts that emanate right that have vibrational frequency so it includes all of the multi dimensions because what we hold in awareness if we connect to the heart that's in our awareness mm -hmm. If we connect to our intuitive faculty, that's in our awareness. If we have a, a thought, an idea, that's in our awareness. If we have a soul yearning, that is in our awareness. Mm -hmm. So when I say mind and when we're talking about it this mm -hmm. way, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I call the... <laughs> The official unofficial mantra of quantum think is when you master your mind, you master your life and your world. So what I so I thought, OK, well, how do we do that? Right. How do we achieve this level of mastery, mm -hmm. this level of being centered in present moment awareness? beyond any automatic conditioning, mm -hmm. beyond any automatic beliefs, beyond any, what I call, right? Borrowing from science, the term least action pathways. So let me just say one thing real quick. The premise of quantum think is that we think in a system and the system is according to the prevailing beliefs, ideas, and assumptions mm -hmm. of the prevailing worldview. So you mentioned in your introduction about, we know that we're, we've already made the shift in many ways in society, especially technologically mm -hmm. and in science, we've made the shift from the scientific materialist view of the industri that gave rise to the industrial revolution which is, you know, around 400 years ago began. And we're in the quantum age. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that when we take a leap because to the quantum age and start to look and live from the system of expanded thinking of the more up-to-date and accurate nature of reality according to science and spirituality and when we can put that into practice when we become the walking talking embodiments of that mm -hmm. this is where we have a chance for mastery so yes right so yeah, we're absolutely. Looking in mm -hmm. the if you say the what are the principles well the third principle distinction i call it in quantum in the quantum think system is infinite possibility we live in an infinite possibility universe. In every moment, there are infinite number of ways that reality can manifest. So if we personalize this, Laurie, mm -hmm. it really is, what does that mean? Is that 
how are we experiencing? Because how we're experiencing, which is giving us our personal resonance, mm -hmm. which is using the term from Seth, the feeling tone of our being, not only emotion and including mm -hmm. it, but that feeling tone that we call our vibrational frequency mm -hmm. that <laughs> wait a minute, I lost my train here. <laughs> that when, what was I saying? <laughs> I want to say it in a simpler way. Okay. That, oh yeah, infinite possibility. <laughs> Sometimes I have to laugh at myself lately because I'm, I know we, you and I were talking about it. There is so much going on mm -hmm. and so many shifts in energy would in the collective and planetarily speaking, we can talk about that. But so sometimes I think, where am I? <laughs> but here I am. So and <laughs> bear with are. us, folks. <laughs> right. Stay with us. I'm sure it's happening to you too. So infinite possibility. So you could say what we focus on is giving us our experience of life moment to moment. So the another, another paradox, your mind is your life because what you hold in awareness is giving you your experience and you are not your mind, mm -hmm. which means we are the transcendent, uh, all encompassing unbounded awareness that witness watcher who is aware of what fills our mind and gives us our experience. Mm -hmm. So you could say infinite possibility, getting back to your question about least action pathway, because that's where I talk about this. What keeps us from thinking from infinite possibility mm -hmm. are our least action pathways. So I say, blame it on the lovingly called the industrial age worldview, the classical mechanical worldview. That's another name for it. Mm -hmm. Mechanical, right? So I say at this phase in evolution of humanity, in many ways, not to insult any of us, we became mechanical too. Mm -hmm. So, and we've had a focus in our society, in the collective, the focus has been around the physical dimension, even though we know we have an energetic dimension, subtle energy, spiritual dimension, cosmic dimension, esoteric of the soul, divine dimension, all these things. But the society, which we refer to, right, lightly as 3D, has been focused around the physical, where we look separate, we look different, we look separate from the earth, et cetera. So the least action pathway, I borrowed this term to mean the way the energy or the thought goes mm -hmm. simply because it's been that route before. The least conscious action, mm -hmm. the least creative action, the most mechanical action, and the reason is to, well, I wanted to say about this, but, and I want to know what you think about it, because we can free ourselves from the experience of suffering. Absolutely. Now, it isn't that we don't have circumstances which are horrendous, horrific, there's plenty of suffering we can point to. Something happened in the nearby town mm -hmm. where I live the day that we're recording this, where a part of a condominium building collapsed. Mm -hmm. I heard about it. Yes. And it's actually uh, my husband, Alan Collins, who I like to say is my partner in all things in business and life. Mm -hmm. We lived there when we first uh, wow. got married in that building and so so many people oh wasn't that the building but anyway there's a lot of circumstantial evidence for suffering mm -hmm. but what i realized is that if you can just see your thoughts that automatically come in remember we're in a mind field and i say a lot of the thoughts we have, we're not choosing. They're not even ours. Who knows where they came from, mm -hmm. from a quantum thing perspective, it doesn't matter. 
because we can never really get to it. Oh, you know, my teacher told me I'd never make it when I was three years old. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. And think of the masters. They say present moment, right? Be in the now. So the least action pathway is to be able to look at a thought that comes in, make a distinction between a thought that you consciously choose mm -hmm. and one that just comes in that you wouldn't choose because you wouldn't choose a disparaging an ugly thought uh, uh you know a thought that gives you a bad experience mm -hmm. or you know emanates that out to another and that's the idea of the least action pathway give it no meaning it's like oh there's that least action pathway mm -hmm. what was my intent again but that the, having the intention alongside of it and and, st and keeping that in your consciousness for me in my work is the is the 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 path of mastery the willingness to do that and it, it, it's all about willingness because i see people i know people well who say well but that's just what i think well it that is scary or that is bad or that is wrong and not because they don't have the willingness alongside the noticing the thought to say, oh, hmm, that's not really what I want to hold in my life. Exactly. I am so glad you brought this up, Lori, because you're really at <laughs> the heart of the matter. You're really laser focused in on this because we have a thought and let's say the way that you're speaking about it. Someone thinks, no, but I really believe that way, you know, whether it's a, a political stance or, or whatever it is, right, on a cause, on this, on that. And from a quantum think perspective, and this is, a, I don't think I've ever said this aloud, but mm -hmm. this is a key aspect of quantum thinking. I have written it in the, in the uh, book, Do You Quantum Think? But it's, does this, what is the efficacy of having that belief? Yes. What is the benefit of it? Does it have a benefit? Mm -hmm. Is that in sync with what you really want? And, you know, the other, so that is why it's so important what you're saying, because the point is we don't have to own every thought that happens to come into what I like to call the thoughtosphere. Yes, yes, yes. It's it's even true about ideas that come in that that seem inspired and may be inspired. That doesn't mean that they're for you. And we have right. to have discernment about because we're we're if we're tapped into the whole field, we're going to pick up all sorts of things. And it might be I get an idea that's for you. And it's not for me at all. But if I start going down the path of, well, I've got to do this, I, I'm going to be out of sync with myself in some way. Excellent. And this is why, you know, in, in quantum thinking, what I distinguish as the five natural faculties of mind. So the whole of it has us master that. And what are the five natural faculties of mind? Again, it's an infinite possibility universe. Mm -hmm. You could make up any number of dimensions, faculties of mind, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the idea of what I call the art of distinguishing a new worldview of learning is you distinguish something in your awareness in such a way that it transforms your relationship to it for the better, of course, mm -hmm. and to see what it makes possible for you and others, right? So the five natural faculties, because it gets back to what you were just pointing to, are intent, mm -hmm. which creates, intuition, which connects, right, to mm -hmm. information, situate, right? It connects. Uh, subtle energy which tunes in and tr and you have we have the ability to work with the subtle energy to transform it to transmute it to a higher plane mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the third that i distinguish the fourth one is resonance and we know that resonance which we've been talking about 
our vibrational frequency in the range of frequency is what uh, manifests because it's what you attract the frequency range of your personal resonance mm -hmm. and we all do and we're attracted toward and the fifth faculty I say is meditation now meditation we all know is, a, is an important great practice but what I'm saying is that it's a natural faculty of mind mm -hmm. and this is important to this entire conversation you and I are having now because when you realize the meditate and all these five faculties of course work together because if you can live in a meditative state, mm -hmm. so you're in the transcendent state at the same time that you're in the imminent, in the mundane mm -hmm. world of action mm -hmm. and participation. And that's the idea is that we are this simultaneously. So you don't get stuck in any identity like a fixed identity. The old world view was a uh, that scientific materialist reality where the scientists said only, you know, physical matter is real, is that it was fixed. You know, things were either this way or that way, right? The either or mechanism came into play. So when you realize that whatever way you are relating to yourself, to any idea, to anything in the world, that it's nothing is fixed. This is the, the accuracy, right, of the nature of reality, according yeah. to science and spirituality, mm -hmm. spiritual wisdom, that everything is shifting and changing all the time. It's energy in flux informed by intelligent, made conscious. And we're the vehicles that <laughs> divine intelligence chose so, to make conscious. So the idea is that you don't have to identify with every thought that comes into your thoughtosphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be attached to it. And in fact, the mastery state is that state of the perspective of all perspectives where it doesn't mean you st you don't have preferences and like that it's a partnership it, it's a partnership right it's a, it's really about a very simple word workability hmm. what will have this work for everyone yeah but it's that perspective that you just included there what will work for everyone so if it's if I if I have that small world view of what's in this for me, then well, there's no mastery in that. Let's let's just say that right out front. There's no mastery in that. There's it's not possible because we're talking about trying to be, we're we're talking about the fact that we are the universe. And I am you and you are me in that framework or in that way of being and energy, then we we have to, we have to see. How does this work for everybody? Right. And I wanted to get back to what you were saying. That just reminded me what you were saying earlier, Laurie, about, well, you could have a thought maybe, and it wasn't even, you're receiving information, right? <laughs> Cosmic Intel. And it, oh, that wasn't for me. That was something that I needed to tell you. Exactly. And that happens to me with clients too, with um, yes. private clients. Mm -hmm. And, and it, you know, it's, it's really interesting. And this is where those five, why I brought up about the five natural faculties of mind, because this is the way of life yeah. of the net of the expanded consciousness. Yes. And These I think that's what we were getting to about meditation and being in that not meditative state about sitting cross-legged and, you know, having your eyes closed, but having that connection with with that essence that still point that's exactly right so that you're always in it mm -hmm. now is it possible of course it's possible mm. it's an infinite possibility universe <laughs> right and so you know i think what one of the chapters in do you quantum think it's 
it's in two parts. Part one, wake up. <gasps> Why should we quantum think? I'm a little maverick, so I like to say, <laughs> okay, you want me to quantum think? Why should I? And there's a chapter in their mastery, which I think you've referred to a couple of times, but because that is the mastery state. When you mm -hmm. think about just an ordinary life, you want to master your art, whatever that is for you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Your your way <clears throat> of counseling, of coaching, or whatever we're doing. Uh, you want to master being a golfer. I'm a tennis player. Anything you want to master mm -hmm. is being, it requires that state because you could take, um, and again, you know, I know tennis, so I'll talk about that, but you could take the great, right? The top tennis players in the world mm -hmm. and what they have all the skills they've been playing tennis since they were three years old mm -hmm. i mean they are they've had every coach they have physio they have a whole team of right collective mm -hmm. <laughs> that work with them so they achieve mastery but in the moment what matters is that mastery of mind, mm. that state. Mm -hmm. So we could say, and I do write about this, that that is the state from which all great achievement derives. Mm. And when you're, when you condition yourself, because I, <clears throat> we're born we're born to be in that state, mm -hmm. to live in that state. Mm -hmm. That every master who we, you know, study the Buddha, uh, the Christ, wh whoever it is mm -hmm. that we could name in whatever tradition, right? That we all <laughs> relate. And I always say, it's an infinite possibility universe. So if you use the term God cannot be limited, right? To right. one, mm -hmm. one picture, one angle, right. one. So we all, that's part of the beauty of the diversity of a spiritual life is that we all connect in whoever we connect in with. So, but when you look at it, what did they all say? You can be what I am. Mm -hmm. You. Exactly. Everybody that's who is in this conversation and those who are not in this directly, but they're out there. <laughs> that's what we're, that's the time we're in. And, and, and that's what's going on. So it's how do we develop that mastery? And I call it, it mastery of self as opposed to like mastering a skill. That's one, not a, as opposed to, but mastering a skill is one place, but mastery of self mastery of life that's exactly it and, it's and, mastery and, of uh, of self with an uppercase yes S. With, exactly exactly right? and that is really that's what it's all about and then it's applied because you know we're in i think you know that my i call it my hobby but i call myself an avid student of uh astrology of planetary trends uh. Mm -hmm. uh because i like to see the trends of the energy and where is it mm -hmm. directing us mm -hmm. i think infinite intelligence uses the planets to say to humanity okay focus on this this mm -hmm. year and so when you when you look at that and you realize that we're in this time where we're we're, we're in the age of aquarius okay mm -hmm. and we're just sort of like, you know, it's a long, let's say cycles, these energetic cycles that are brought about by planets and the whole galaxy moving and all this stuff is that it's not a black and white line. Mm -hmm. So it's emanations and it's, it's emanations of energy on top of energy on top of energy. So we could say we're the beginning of the Aquarian age. And what does that mean? Well, Aquarius in the Western is, I'm talking about Western astrology, mm -hmm. the, the 
Chinese, mm -hmm. Vedic. I, I don't know. I don't know a lot about it, but you know, Vedic, Chinese, different. Yeah. I study the Western, and in in Western astrology, Aquarius is the sign. The symbol is the water bearer. So mm -hmm. it's you're bringing, you're serving humanity. And you think water is a symbol for consciousness mm -hmm. and Aquarius rules, you know, they all rule all these different things in life and Aquarius rules. It, it, it's considered it's ruled by Uranus, which is the higher mind mm -hmm. where Mercury is the everyday mind. And it's, it rules uh, uh, technology and um it's a mental sign. It rules thinking. And so it does rule. It, it's about, it's a, the most humanitarian sign. It's about humanity coming together in unity. Yeah. But the interesting paradox of the sign of Aquarius is that Aquarius represents our uniqueness, our unique individuality. Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting because it's a time where we are here to get in touch with, express yeah. what gifts we have that are unique exactly. to us. Yeah. And at the same time, bring that unique who you are mm -hmm. and who you are here to be and express. And it's many, many things, mm -hmm. not one thing over time of your life, everything evolves and the world evolves around us. And to bring that as our contribution, as you say, mm -hmm. to the collaboration of this higher state for humanity. Wow. My teacher used to say, one of my teachers used to say, um, the one and the many, you know, our uniqueness, our unique expression, and that's necessary with or into the collective expression. And that's, that is what I, I have been most drawn to these days. And that, and, and the programs that I'm creating are all around what happens when we, when we are in that, um, that, that, co-creation state when we are in that that still point with ourselves when we've learned how to do that when we've mastered that and then we come with a with a working group whether that's a team or a cohort or or a conscious group that's saying we're going to gather we're going to see what's possible we're going to be here in a co-creative state so that we're co-creating as above so below and then we're bringing that to the group Right. And it's yeah. so interesting. And I heard you, I think I heard you say, <laughs> you'll correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> on your website, where you asked that question, mm -hmm. um, have you thought about what's the best self you can be? Or I'm paraphrasing. How do you say it, Lori? Um, I'm not like, sure. Uh <laughs> Well, you do it's, say, <laughs> look on your website. Just, <laughs> you know. what, it's I, a, what it's really about is like, how do we, how do we uh, connect with the truth of who we are? How do we live yeah, that? But then what right. happens when we bring that? Here's my, the next piece of that is what happens when we bring that together? What happens when there's a group of us and each person is committed in that way? What do we get to co-create together and how? Exactly. So, you know, this is such, like, if you take this conversation, just what you just said, and mm -hmm. what we're talking about, and you know, you look in the world today, and everybody, you know, everybody wants, we want that every person is respected, regardless of ethnicity, uh, beliefs, color of skin, right? It's a big thing right now. But we had so much attention on that, mm -hmm. that where, when you talk about, well, what's living a transcendent life? What's living mm -hmm. a quantum thing life is mm -hmm. that we know what you focus on expands. Mm -hmm. So there's a distinction in quantum think system. It's called transformation as distinct from change. 
Mm. And the idea of it is that if you focus on change, then you're keeping the very thing that you're trying to change or get rid of in some way, you're keeping it in place because you have all your attention on it. So what's the difference? Transformation means going beyond the current form. So if you look at the quantum principles and you realize, okay, E equals MC squared, I like to say of that. I don't know what Albert Einstein exactly <laughs> meant, but I think <laughs> I try to channel him through once in a while. <laughs> anyway, so, right? Mm -hmm. Energy and mass are controvertible, but the more energy you give something with your attention, the more mass you give it. Mm -hmm. So we're actually manifesting what we don't want rather than what would a quantum thinking world be? It would be, what do we want? What you're saying, you get together, okay. Well, what do, let's not talk about what we don't want. Right. Let's not talk about uh, there's, you know, prejudice and hatred and all that. Let's just focus on what we do want yes. and live that reality. Mm -hmm infinite possibility universe live the reality that you want you can only do that when you're at choice and you're only at choice when you have awakened awareness where you can transcend your own beliefs i have an instagram uh, post i did a while back and it says can you think beyond your own beliefs mm. can you think beyond your own beliefs can i have a strong belief and can i think beyond that because my intent is for mastery exactly. and i cannot be stuck with any one belief especially if it's well if it's not working for <laughs> everyone okay so what's the edge of aquarius mm -hmm. all of us coming together in harmony this is the dawning of okay i like singing <laughs> i've done that before to on the air i better not do that but it you know that's it harmony that's and understanding it. right yeah. so mm -hmm. uh it's such a great great job can i share something about well I just want to say one other thing about this, mm -hmm. because I notice with people who are in this conversation with us, I don't mean just in this podcast mm -hmm. right now, but in the big conversation, right, of a leap in uh, conscious evolution, that there's a lot of talk about, you know, the the dark night, or what is it called? Dark the dark night of the, night of the soul, soul. Mm -hmm. of the soul. And, you know, people who have what I call crisis awakening. I say, we're gonna awaken. Is it gonna be conscious awakening or crisis awakening? Right. As a humanity, we mostly have had crisis awakening, mm -hmm. but we're trying to get the consciousness higher so we can start to choose <laughs> collectively a conscious awakening. but. The point that I've been thinking about a lot is that in the age of Pisces, right? The last 2150 years, whatever it was, mm -hmm. where that is the age of suffering. <laughs> it's called, in astrology, they say serve or suffer. There's another, there's another key phrase in it. Think of it right now. But you think, okay, well, if we're going into a new time, into literally creating the new earth, mm -hmm. then why do we have to awaken through suffering? We don't have to we don't awaken have to do that the way. Thing. Right? right? And you know what? And I was talking about this with my husband, Alan, the other day, and I said, you know, it's not like people, I said, I don't really think about when, 
you know, we've been through as you're going through your evolution as a human being, right? In this incarnation where you can have time. I mean, I've had times of depression, uh, you know, like sort of resignation, hopelessness, mm -hmm. where we all have, I suppose, there are those experiences. Or even when I came, you know, as a teenager looking in the world and saying, okay, well, how do we do this as you think so you become bit? Mm -hmm. Because there's a big discrepancy here. But I thought you used to think I got off on the wrong planet because this <laughs> cannot be. We're mass producing weapons to kill each other and thinking it's okay. There's mm -hmm. something wrong with this picture. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we've had that. It's like, not like I haven't had those experiences, right? Of despair or whatever you want to call it. However, I realized and it's not to pat myself on the back, but just look at it. Uh, all right, I'll pat myself on the back. But <laughs> just to look at it from another angle is that I don't make that the central point of my life. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the opportunity now for people who have had dire circumstances. Certainly, you know, during the COVID a lot of people had lost people that they lost. I mean, there's, you know, we could name and name and name an infinite number of horrible things, yeah. right? That justify mm -hmm. real suffering and not just justify, but manifest it. But do we, it's like, Lori, do we have to make that the central point of our life, mm -hmm. the focal point of our life? Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't have to base our whole life around that. Okay, it's like, okay, when I was 22, I was depressed, but I'm not thinking about that now mm -hmm. because conscious creation is creating what you do want. Yeah, and that's the bottom line is what do you want? And if you do want something different, you have to be willing, 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 willing to do something differently. And in this case, what you're bringing forward is you need to think differently. You need to be willing to think differently and to go beyond what you believe to be true. Right. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean giving up everything. It doesn't okay. mean really in a way giving up anything, does it? No, it doesn't. Because we like to say, you know, when you going from the, because otherwise you get trapped in the old either or, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh, Industrial age thinking, that's no good, but quantum thinking is good. No, it, we need all everything we have gleaned mm -hmm. from that worldview. Right. How to categorize, analyze, uh, use ordinary rational logic. I mean, have things be, auto, you know, obviously the body has a lot of automatic, we wouldn't survive without it, mm -hmm. automatic systems. Or when we're typing on a computer, when we're playing an instrument, a lot of it, you know, or the skills we learn in any sport or dance or whatever, where it becomes automatic. The difference is whether you're aware of it, when you become aware of it, mm -hmm. it's you're actually a choice, even though it's a, like least action pathways aren't bad. They're just automatic. Sometimes the least a, a least action pathway is one that you want, but when you're in awakened awareness, you're actually choosing it. Mm -hmm. So when we say think differently, yes. So when we say take a literal quantum leap in consciousness mm -hmm. and look and live from the quantum world view, from expanding your knowledge of these principles mm -hmm. of integrating them into your life you're not giving up the the ability to think logically from a ra you know that rational linear logic mm -hmm. you're expanding so you have choice so you could say like generally speaking we're in and out of it right yes. until you have this is the beauty of distinguishing because distinguishing it is bringing it full focus in the forefront of your awareness that, oh, 
this conditioned that system, that worldview conditioned me to these beliefs mm -hmm. and this worldview, I can proactively condition myself for a more expansive view. And since I have that distinction of the system, I have choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just one thing about the system is that <laughs> Alan always wants me to, he says, remember the system that <laughs> we live <laughs> right in this. Why is the system important as a thinking system? Because, uh, and I wrote, changing the world, one thought at a time. Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. You know, imagine, I say, the agony of that, right? Not to mention the impossibility of it. So it's not like you're monitoring every thought. Did I choose this thought? Did I not? No. But when you're in, when you expand into the system, instead of trying to get to the higher consciousness mm -hmm. you're coming from the higher consciousness exactly. with the knowledge of the principles mm -hmm. and the system takes you with it because it's like a vortex so you don't have to it's like a natural it's like any time you've ever had any kind of transformation right or awakening in your life we've all had them it's like one day you're in one state of awareness the next day you had a transformation and you don't even remember what the old state was like. Mm -hmm. So it's something like that. Or I like to use the very simple example of, you know, you go into a supermarket, it's a system. If you didn't have the system, then to find the items on your list, you know, it could take you forever. Yeah. yeah. So because so the system gives a you a place to rest in really to rest and move forward in. That's exactly it. And you receive, you know, um, can I share about my, well, we're just about out of time. So I just want to, I want to, I mean, I want to go on and on and on and I'm <laughs> aware that we're just about out of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. Didn't it just fly by? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and I'm aware that because I work with energy and that my work in energy and initiation is around opening people up to, to those experiences within their own wiring. And I love all of what you have brought to us about the system as a way of bringing forward infinite possibility. Exactly. So it makes it easy. Mm -hmm. It makes it easy. Exactly. I want to make sure that you let people know where they can find you. And also that you uh, had sent me a gift that I can include with this podcast. Um, I did. It was of you doing a recording. Yes. And um, well, the best place to reach anything <laughs> is on my website, which is dianecollins.com. Diane with two N's, very important. The mm -hmm. other one is somebody else. D-I-A-N-N-E-C-O-L-L-I-N-S.com. So that covers everything. But what the gift is, I just started recording the audio book of Do You Quantum Think? New Thinking That Will Rock Your World, just about a week ago in this great, unbelievable studio um, in Miami. And it's like where like so many rock stars they have <laughs> walls and walls of platinum and gold records i think mm -hmm. oh my god let me buy that in really? you know but it's a very what the the gift is a chapter from my book that alan asked me to record this is before i went into studio mm -hmm. So I was kind of practicing because I knew that I would be recording my book, which has been an incredible experience. I know I don't have time to share about it, but it's like, I'm li I'll say one thing on it. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to myself reading my book aloud to myself. And it is, it's amazing. And Alan is in the control room with the engineers. And you're, it's coming into your cells, isn't it? And he's getting a whole different 
thing oh, of yeah. it. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, so this, what I recorded because he wanted it for a, a mastery program he was leading with a group of clients is the chapter, it's in part two. Hey, you can quantum think, live the wisdom, the quantum think system. Mm -hmm. So part one was wake up, part two, live the wisdom. And it's chapter 15, the art of distinguishing a new worldview of learning, because that is the method by which we integrate the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so this chapter, I love that chapter for that reason. And I think that even people who haven't, you know, read the rest of it or anything, it's like you tune into this and, um, you'll get it and it will it will actually um activate in you your ability to create your own distinctions mm -hmm. that are unique to you mm -hmm. so that is the gift is that it's a link right i gave you the right. link mm -hmm. which is it come it's in the dropbox but it's a you don't have to log in you don't have to opt in nothing just you cl cl click that link, wait 10 seconds before mm -hmm. it begins, and you'll hear the art of distinguishing a new worldview of learning. And that will give you an experience of quantum thinking. Wow. Thank you, Diane, for, for that. That's very generous. And, and I wanted to make sure that we had a little time for you to mention it because I, I want to make sure people get it. And it will be in the show notes. But and uh, the link for that. So you'll be able to listen to that yourself. And then you'll know why I'm so um, excited for you to go get her book. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Diane Collins, for your generosity and, and, uh, and all your brilliance. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Reflections, right? <laughs> mirror, mirror. Mirror, mirror. Thank you so much, Lori Seymour, for having me on this podcast. I'm just absolutely delighted to be in this conversation with you. Thank you. And thank you to our listeners for being with us today, truly at Wisdom Talk Radio. Of course, join us here regularly for more wisdom, discovery, and illumination. And you can find us on your favorite place to listen to podcasts. We're in probably all the different places you might think of. And if most importantly, if you've enjoyed listening today, please leave us a review because that allows other people, new people who haven't discovered Wisdom Talk Radio to find us to access the wisdom and transform the world. And for more about fast tracking your ideas to creation and revenue, find me, Laurie Seymour, over at thebacainstitute.com. And that's B-A-C-A. Take the quiz and find out your creative innovator style so that you can turn your ideas into reality without missing another moment. Thanks for joining us here at Wisdom Talk Radio. We wish you well in your conscious explorations. For more information and to join in the conversation, our website is wisdomtalkradio.com or at Wisdom Talk Radio on Facebook.